the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> most wonderful? The most wonderful time of the year? Really, most, wonderf most wonderful time of the year. The, the whole year? This time right now, this time we're just coming into, this is the most, really, all right. <laughs> I disagree. Make no mistake, I don't hate this time. I am no curmudgeon, I am no Scrooge. I'm a happy person with fond memories of this time. And my objection is in no way based on the gross consumerism that goes on or the real meaning of Christmas or the whole Santa versus Jesus thing. They hate each other, by the way. <laughs> I simply don't like what, this, what the holidays do to me, the person this most wonderful time turns me into. For while I am generally 80% Christ-like, I'm ironically turned into a total dick right before the celebration of his birth. <laughs> For me, like many of you, this season hinges on traveling in airports and waiting behind people who don't realize what can and cannot be aboard the aircraft with you and are vociferously upset that their giant Costco-sized bottle of olive oil, which apparently one can't get in Detroit, <laughs> will, not be making, will not be making the journey in their carry-on luggage. It's at that time that I feel slightly less like sympathizing with them and saying, oh, I know security, it's so stringent at the holidays, at least we're safe. I, I feel less sympathetic and like saying that than I do, toothpaste is a liquid. Step out of line, you stupid, stupid cunt. <laughs> Use of the word cunt is not unlike drinking good scotch. The first time you use it, it may seem strong, But it goes down far easier with repeated employ. And, bef <laughs> and before long, you find that truly nothing else will suffice. <laughs> there is no other word for cunt. Be warned, though, I am told that it is my use of the word cunt that keeps me from being 100% Christ-like. I do have religious objections to this time, though. It seems to me that what we now term the holidays only serve to point out our differences, differences between people, Christians and Jews, and it has recently come to my attention that there are others out there as well who are somehow neither Christian nor Jew. <laughs> Kidding aside, it is at this most wonderful of times that I get most sad of the needless hatred fostered and wasteful wars fought simply because your pretend world differs ever so slightly from my pretend world. <laughs> Maybe one reason I like being out here is that the holidays are easier to miss. Back home in the Midwest, the snow somehow makes it unmistakable. But in Southern California, one of the first and only indications that the holidays have arrived is when Christmas tree lots begin to blossom where gas stations once stood. <laughs> I'm not certain why this is the case, but when you see what appears to be major construction at a gas station in Los Angeles, that gas station is going away forever. It, it's like seeing an elderly patient in a hospital's ICU. Someone's grandpa is not coming home. <laughs> that location may, may become a Jiffy Lube, but for reasons unknown to me, it will never sell gasoline again. <laughs> to be completely honest, I think that what I now realize to be a growing disdain for this, the most wonderful of times, centers on the holidays being a profound and constant reminder of how much money I do not have and how much money I never seem to have. We often hear the question, can money buy happiness? Of course, the answer is no, which is stupid because the answer is yes. <laughs> More accurately, hells to the yes. I dream of a day when I can give meaningful big presents, things that could be life-changing. I, I wish I could give my, give my family and friends a tool or an opportunity that would launch them headlong into what they really should be doing, where their hearts really lie. What I really wish I could give them is an extreme makeover, whole fucking life edition. I want to give the gift of, I want to give the gift of education, the gift of knowledge. I too seek knowledge for myself, but I realize about myself that there are limits to how much I would choose to know about how the world works. Not long ago, my wife, who is a veterinarian, and I were making dinner. I was washing a chicken in preparation for Indonesian ginger chicken from the Barefoot Contessa's cookbook, said to be a favorite of Lauren Bacall. 
I was rinsing the chicken in cool water and was about to, as instructed, pat them dry with paper towels when I noticed that one of the, I guess, thigh joints looked different than the others. My wife noticed me noticed and asked what was wrong. You see, she is well aware of my intense and active psychosis regarding self-poisoning and knows that I am all too quick to, to jettison entire meals if I fear even one ingredient may have in the next day or two become in any way soggy or odd looking. <laughs> Beth asked what was wrong and I showed her the one of these is different empty ball and socket joint. She said, oh, it's fine. Really, it's fine. Don't throw it out. I'll eat it. I agreed and began the paper towel padding. As she returned to what she was doing, she casually added, that chicken just had arthritis. To which I reacted. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that if I knew everything my wife does, I would never leave the house again. <laughs> I know that a not inconsequential reason I've lost my love for this time of the year is that I've lost both my parents. Though I'm certain I didn't realize it when I was growing up, they were in many ways what made the season special for me. Truly, they were the glue that held our family strong. My par parents were people who often had limited means and always had limited interest on spending any means on what my father termed plastic crap or <laughs> as yet unbroken toys. <laughs> Still, we would always receive one really good present, one present you wanted, a bike or cross-country skis or a snare drum, and then pretty much closed for school and church. My parents always said that the most meaningful gifts one could give were those you make yourself. A crucial ingredient to giving gifts you make yourself is the ability to make gifts yourself. <laughs> which both my mother and father were able to do and do very well. I myself have never been terribly handy, but do have a decent background in music. It makes me cringe to think of how often in my early youth my older siblings received gifts from me like, Happy Birthday or Merry Christmas. Please follow me to Over by the Piano and enjoy the following tone poem. <laughs> You wrote me another song, my brother would ask. Song? No. No. It's really more of a tone poem. <laughs> what made it special is that it was truly unique and could never be played the same way twice. <laughs> Owing in no small part to my never getting around to writing it, much less writing it down. Despite our consistent insistence that we limit our spending, my wife and I perpetually spend more than we should on gifts, and we pay even more to ship them to her parents' house in Michigan. Because of work commitments, hers, not mine, we always arrive on Christmas Eve. This year will be no different. We'll have a nice dinner with her family, sing Christmas carols, put, up, put the nieces and nephews to bed, and then rush upstairs to her childhood room to sit in the closet and hurriedly, hurriedly wrap presents until 3 or 3.30 in the morning. It's then that I think, this is exactly how Jesus would want us celebrating his birth. <laughs> in truth, it's not so bad. I love being with Beth and both of our families, and I suppose the travel and the money and the headaches are a small price to pay for being together but seriously, most wonderful? <laughs> I guess it must be true, it's, it's in a song, or as I call them, tone poems. 